Look, man. See, so team, keep it clean. This is why I try to tell y'all subscribe to this channel and make sure you turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. Because, unfortunately for a lot of y'all, now is the season where you're going to be seeing a lot more of my face on a daily basis, man. Because stuff is just going to be happening after this, after this, after this, after this, after this. And it's going to be crazy. But don't say I ain't warn you. But anyway. The Ravens, who a lot of fans have been wondering, like, man, are they going to bring in some help on the edge? Are they going to bring in somebody else who could rush the pass or maybe like a veteran or something like that? Because while a lot of us have been thinking Jadavian Clowney, while a lot of us have been thinking Justin Houston, while some people have even been thinking Melvin Ingram, there have been a lot of names that people have been tossing around, but... Ravens ain't been biting on nobody, and we've been wondering, like, all right, are they just going to roll with the boys that they got, with Adafi away, and with uh, David Ajabo, and Tyus Bowser, kind of, even though he's more the drop bag guy, but w what are they going to do? But the Ravens, they finally answered the question today, because Ian Rappaport, he reported that the Ravens are having a visit with free agent defensive end, former Jaguars, uh, Dwayne Smoot. Said he's set to visit the Ravens early next week, as Baltimore eyes possible edge help, sources say. Smoot tore his Achilles late last season, but is doing well in his rehab and prepping to get back on the field. Baltimore is a strong option. So, while uh, Baltimore, they, they're looking to bring him in very soon, it's not imminent and it's not ASAP because they said uh, early next week. So, Ravens, there's some clear interest there. How significant the interest is, is to be determined. Now, uh, when it came to Dwayne Smoot, I wasn't familiar with his name. I wasn't familiar with his game. So, I'm sure uh, with a lot of y'all, y'all probably did the same exact thing that I do. Because wh what do we do when we hear the Ravens bringing in somebody for a visit? Or even if the Ravens sign somebody who we may be naive to. What do we do? I know the first thing that a lot of us do, go look at the stats. Go look at the numbers. And while numbers, they don't ever tell the whole story, the numbers that we look at from him, <laughs> hey, we like what they're saying. Because if we look over the past, let's just go the past four or five years. So five years ago, in 2018, um, he had four tackles, one assisted tackle, no sacks. So, okay, cool. All right, cool. He was a young, young guy. But then if we go to 2019, uh, he had 17 tackles, but he had six sacks. He's like, okay, maybe he was feeling like he was feeling uh, off of Lamar MVP season. So he he was getting that energy. He was like, man, I want to go be in Baltimore. It might take me a little while, but I want to go be there. But then in 2020, he followed that up with 25 tackles and five and a half sacks. Then 2021, he followed that up with 36 tackles and six sacks. Then last year, he followed that up, even though he missed some time, but he followed that up with 21 tackles and five sacks. So the past four years. Nothing less than five sacks from him, from Mr. Smoot. Nothing less. So what I see from that is, and he got, I think last year they said he had 12 QB hits. So that's nice. If you were a defensive end and you're hitting the quarterback, you're getting there. But also what that lets us know, too, is that he's a closer. He's a finisher. Now, I'm sure nobody would be expecting him if the Ravens do bring him in and they do end up signing him. Nobody would be expecting him to be, oh, go out there and get 10 sacks. Go out there and get 15 sacks. That would be nice. We wouldn't complain, but I don't think that would be anybody's expectation. But if you can give us a solid five, six sacks, oh, yeah, hey, that could go a long way. Because it's not like he was going to be out there on the field on, with the Ravens defense 24-7 as they're starting the end. Now, wow, I am very naive to his game. Something that I'm not going to do is what I did last year. Um, and I'm not going to sleep on him. And I'm not going to sleep on this being a potential signing for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm not trying to overhype it or anything like that. But I remember last year, same scenario. The Ravens were looking for edge help. Who did they bring in? They brought in Stephen Means. They brought him in for a visit. And then they ended up signing him. And I was saying, okay, Stephen Means. I know the name. Uh, He's been all right in the league so far. But then we watched him in preseason, and this man was really getting to the quarterback. And I was thinking, like, all right, they, they just brought him in for some training camp competition and whatnot, but he probably ain't going to make the roster. He probably ain't going to make the team. He probably won't be there in week one. Uh, this just gonna be, he's going to be there for the, the whole 90-man roster and whatnot, and then after that, when they do the cutdowns, he'll be gone. But no, 
And even though I think he started the season off on a practice squad, I believe, I think, but either way, he was playing in the week one game. He was there. But unfortunately for him, um, he had on that New York Jets field, he either tore his ACL or tore his, t- blew out of his Achilles, one of them two. I forgot exactly which one it was. Um, but my point is, I slept on it. When the Ravens first brought him in, I slept on I was like, oh, okay, well, it's cool that they brought But I ain't doing that this year. And then, of course, again, when, when you see the production, you see the, the, the recent production. Not even production from way back years ago, but recent production. And I think that's very important because you, you're bringing in somebody that has shown you, you again, look at, the, like I said, the numbers don't tell the whole story, but they tell a nice preview. They tell a nice preview. And it's a, it's a nice little cliff notes of the story, as a matter of fact. But seeing those numbers is, is nice. Because it lets us know, like, okay, even though he ain't a starter like that, he he's getting the job done. He's getting the job done over there for the uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who the Ravens were familiar with last year. Oof. That was a painful game. It was a very painful game. But I wonder if this is obviously they, they're interested in him. They're bringing him in for a visit. But I wonder if they may be talking to somebody else, too. Because this is around the time. I mean, it happens throughout the entire football season. But what teams can do, and we've seen it happen with the Baltimore Ravens so many times, when they'll bring in somebody for a visit. But that person that they're bringing in for a visit, it's not really with the intention of them signing that person. They may be eyeing somebody else. They may even be talking to somebody else. Because you know them Ravens. They are very, very sneaky. And they are very, very secretive with their stuff. Y'all know that. I know y'all know that. So they, they could be interested in Smoot. They could be interested in Dwayne Smoot. It could be legitimate interest, and that'd be nice. That'd be cool. I wouldn't have no problem with it. Uh, or they may be thinking about somebody else. They could be using him to try to lower somebody else's price tag. You just you, you never know with these type of things. I remember last year. Um, last year, they, they were going crazy with some free agent visits at the end. I think one of them was, um, I want to say Rashawn Green, I believe that was his name. And he either played for the Seahawks prior to the Ravens bringing him in or he ended up going to the Seahawks. But I forgot I forgot which one. And there was another one, too, that they brought in, too. So they were really active in the defensive end department. So this year we'll see if it's more of the same or it ends up being something new. But shout out to Dwayne Smoot. So we'll see. Hopefully his visit goes really, really good uh, early next week, whether it's Monday, whether it's Tuesday, whenever it's going to be. Um, because they, they're going to have him visit when, I guess, when all the veterans, when they get ready to come back in the building and with him being a veteran then he would be on that list since the rookies are there for now the rookies just reported yesterday so they starting to get their little work in and whatnot and then next week it's the veterans and then it's it's gonna be the whole team soon so again trying to tell y'all stuff is getting crazy very very fast i tweeted it today on twitter i said man i'm i'm not ready for football season yet I'm just not ready because I feel like I'm so far behind. I feel like I got so much more stuff that I want to do. I'm not where I want to be at right now. But football season is like here. The slow time, the slow period, that's done. That's a wrap. And it went by so fast. Probably because Ravens had a lot of drama going on and stuff with Lamar Jackson. We ain't know what's going to happen with that. And like my, my, my guy T'Challa, he, he had uh, tweeted at me today. He was like, man, you, you remember those, those, those videos that when you were put in the videos that you, you ain't think Lamar Jackson was coming back. And he said those videos were so just melancholy. They were sad. They were just, it was, it was down. It was a downtime. And I thought, yeah, I, I definitely remember. But I also told him that I was so glad to have been wrong about that. Because I, y'all remember, I didn't think Lamar was coming back. I thought that was it. I was like, man. But I am ooh, I'm gr- grateful to be, have been wrong about that. And I will take a loser lap on that every single day if I need to. Just to show y'all how happy I am that I was wrong about Lamar Jackson not coming back initially. And then, then y'all remember when, when, when I start thinking, okay, maybe he might come back after they signed Odell. And then it's like, oh, okay. Then the Ravens are putting up all these little flirty emojis and stuff. And Lamar's putting up these little flirty emojis. I said, like, well, hold up now. And then, well, y'all know the rest of the story. But it came a long way. It came a long way this offseason. But again, offseason is done. That's a wrap. There's no more slow period. Training camp is here. The vets will be here before you know it. And again, so you can stay up to date with everything. Subscribe to the channel. 
Turn your notifications on, leave a like on the video. When you leave a like on the video, that'll help out the channel. So I appreciate y'all. And that'll also help you stay notified. Because, you know, sometimes, even when you turn on notifications, sometimes YouTube be playing. But if you leave a like on the video, that'll let YouTube know, oh, okay, you actually do like this crazy guy right here who be saying all kind of wild stuff. Wow, you're crazy. But since we know that you're crazy, we're going to notify you of when he drops a video. So... I appreciate y'all. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. Thank y'all. And shout out to Dwayne Smoot. I hope it does go very, 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 very well. Not only in his recovery, because that's first and foremost, but then when he visits the Baltimore Ravens. And we'll see if they can get a deal done. Until then, I love you all. I appreciate you all. And we out.